Welcome to Western Port, the home of Big Red. Let's just get straight into it. Well, I got up at first light this morning and I got out just off Stony Point here and got myself a nice bag of squid. What are you going to do with a bag of squid? You're going to go snapper fishing. I've got the running tide now, so I'm going to use the running tide to go and look around for some snapper. Seeing so it's so early in the season and I haven't got a fish to me name as yet, the first thing I'll do is try and find them. And I've done this probably for the last four weeks and haven't seen a single fish. So hopefully today, things are a bit different. But anyway, I'm going to get up the north arm and have a squiz right now. Show you a little bit about what's the port while we're at it. Let's go. Western Port, a highly tidal estuary system carved over time by the powerful forces of Bass Strait. Cutting its way between the Moynton Peninsula and South Gippsland, it runs up and around two major islands, Philip and French, where it peters out on the vast mudflats and into many mangrove line tributaries. This extreme piece of water, which lies approximately 50 kilometres southeast of Melbourne, is home to some of the best sports fishing in southern Australia. There are thumping King George Whiting, Great Grey Submarines, and Secret Silver. But it's our beloved Big Red that has our focus this time around. This is the place you come to when you want to upsize your snapper. There is still a healthy population of highly competitive school fish like in Port Phillip, but there is one major difference. Out here you can successfully target and catch large snapper consistently throughout the whole season. The trick is learning how to fish in extreme currents and being prepared to master the discipline catching your own fresh bait. Once you can do these two things, all you need to know is when and where to look and how to hook these prized beasts. The key to finding them is to work out their feeding paths and grounds during spring and early summer once they've moved up from the two major entrances and into the middle and upper reaches of the port. Typically, they will be found adjacent to the deep shipping channels and away from the large numbers of schoolfish where they can be left in peace to do their own thing. Ideally, the water to look for is found between the shallow intertidal banks and the channel edges. This is the intermediate zone and the best depth range is from 8 to 14 metres. The only other thing to look for is a fairly constant depth in the direction of the tidal flow and a hard reef covered bottom. This benthos topography allows these big lazy grazers to drift along in the current, head down, tail up at a constant depth while they peruse over the smallest board that is Kanji Reef. And there are plenty of places around the port that match this description. In the following chapters, we will show you how to go about hunting and catching quality snapper in a highly tidal situation. First stop, the runway. A snapper feeding route along the north arm out from Hastings. And like the name suggests, this long, narrow stretch is very flat, just like an aircraft landing strip. Geez, well I hope that explained a few things about my beloved Westerport give you a little bit of an understanding of the movements of snapper into this waterway. But that's all wonderful when they're here and we're still waiting for them to turn up. But the good thing is, 
Even though I haven't got a fish to me name so far this season, I've got the bay to myself. How good's that? There's virtually hardly an other boat, there's probably half a dozen boats out in the whole bay. And uh, all I'm going to do is just run along the intermediate zone, like we just showed you, and basically look for snapper arches on the sounder. And I tell you what, I've been doing that for a month, I've been out filming this week after week, hoping we'd see something. Maybe today's the day. But I tell you what, if I do see something that says to me that's big red, when there's been nothing, surely that's a good thing. So right now I'm going to show you how to use the sander at Mr. Port. The thing with sounders is every sounder is going to give you different sort of readings and different sort of images on the screen. So it's your job to actually learn your sounder, whether it be Hummingbird or Peruno or Lawrence or whatever it is you have, JRC, whatever. But the thing is, you have to learn it. And I know this sounder very, very well after having it for four years in this boat. It's seen me through Great Grey Subs and Secret Silver, and I absolutely love it. And there's nothing flash about it, it's just your basic black and white or monotone sounder. But what's important about any sounder, I believe, is to have a high resolution screen and a quality transducer with lots of oomph. You've got those two things working together, it'll tell you what's down there time and time again. What we're looking for today is arches or what we call sonar ticks, okay? As, this, as we talked about earlier, as the sonar goes down, it'll reflect the shape of the fish off the bottom. So we're looking in the bottom five metres of water here, okay? I've got it zoomed in. And we've got the sensitivity set to manual and I pushed the sensitivity as high as I could before it starts to clutter and go black, I've just backed it off a little bit, which means I'm getting the maximum picture I can without sort of ruining the picture, so to speak. And I'm looking for these arches, and I want them on the bottom, going vertical up and, and bending over the top. That's what they look like on my sander. Other sanders will show full arches, blobs, flat arches, just depends how you've got to set up and how your transducer's position. So I'm just going to do this along the intermediate zone like we've already discussed, and I'm prepared to do it for a couple of hours, and if I do it, a good sign and I'll be ringing me mate and we'll be going fishing. Please show us the way. Now that is what we're looking for. Now that is what we're looking for. That is a big fat arch. It tapers off at the top, it's very fat and as you can see on the scale there, it's a metre in height. That is a big red and that means we found snapper. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a big snapper, mate. Did you just see that? That's a real snapper, Troy. I've just turned around and went back over that first arch, probably 30 metres to the left of it, and there, sure enough, or to the east of it, and there's another one. It's not a stick and it's not as heavy. Have a look at them. It was probably off to the side of the transducer. I tell you what, I'm gonna turn around and if I get another one like that, I've seen enough. Bingo, there's another one, mate. I tell you what, that is three we've seen now in an area of about 100 metres. That is quality. That is big, it is clear and distinct. We have found Big Red. <laughs> so there you go, you can sound up Snapper in Western Port. I'm going to ring Pete DeVries. Oh, mate, there's Snapper in the area. Never answers the bloody phone. Hey, deep carp, deep fries. Oh, there's no deep fries there. There's no deep carp. Oh, Peter DeVries. Oh, sorry, mate. I got it. I got it mixed up again. <laughs> How you going? Yes, yes, I am, mate. Yeah, I got some squid. And I've got even better news than that, mate. I finally found some marks to die for. They're absolutely awesome. There is fish on the runway, mate. Yep. Oh. Probably two hours, three hours of run in, maybe. And then we can fish that run out together. So if you can give the missus a kiss, get something to eat, have a rest, get on that ferry by 12, 12.30. Yeah. 
Well, mate, we're filming as we're talking. So you're actually, we're, we're talking to you live. I'll tell you what, you get on that ferry. Yeah, yeah, you get on that ferry. And uh, give me a ring when you're five minutes out from Stanley. I'll pick you up, mate, and we'll get out here and have a crack. Oh, it's beautiful, Eddie. 19.3, Eddie. But that's only the surface temp. Mate, two days ago it was 17.2. The only, the only difference is the, is the calm days, I'd say. Calm, hot days. Surface temp, yep. Yeah, no, it's only a sea breeze coming up, mate. But let's talk. More fish, let's go. Less talky, more catchy, mate. So you give me a ring. Don't have to bring anything. I'll bring, every, I'll bring all the rods and bait. All right, mate. Give me a call. See ya. We're in. I've got a good feeling about this, mate. Let's go get some rest and get some snapper in the boat for the first of the season. First snapper of the season, eh? They're still there. That's pretty amazing. Do you they're the same fish? Oh, yeah, they're the exact same fish, mate. You idiot. <laughs> That's a good sign, mate. Yeah. No, so the exact same fish according to Pete. Yeah. I haven't moved, it's just the same three I saw this morning. No, I don't think so, mate, but you know what? They're lazy big fish, and the big fish like this shallow water where they can get away from the pinkies and don't have to compete. I know the, the, the channel over here or facings is loaded with pinkies up to about four kilos. Nothing wrong with that, but we're trying to get something sort of a bit better than four or five kilos today. And the best thing is, the sea breeze hasn't come up yet, it's due, and while we've got half an hour running tide to go, we can take the opportunity, and there's another one, and take the opportunity to sand the last of the run-in with the wind behind us, making a very flat sounding platform in this boat. The minute that tyre turns to run out, we're going to position the boat and fish one of these marks. And that's all there is to it. It's a patience game. We know they're in the area, they've been here all day, where they haven't been here for the last month. We just anchor up, we present quality baits to them, and next thing you know, you're in light wing. This fish here. That the GPS and I'll keep looking. Well, as soon as this tie changes, we're going to set the boat up. Let's go back and have a look over them, mate. There wasn't good marks back there. Nice, wasn't there? We've just gone up 30 40 meters past those fish. We'll let the, current, the last of the current take us back to them. We might get one on the top of the high, but I reckon they'll go on the run out. Afternoon run outs in this part of the world, best time to fish. Love it. Let's get some rods ready. Just give you a bit of indication where we are. Just southeast of Lysars. Further to the southeast is the source of this wind. And it's getting stronger. It's not strong yet, but it's going to get up to 15 knots this afternoon, they say. But while we've got a little bit of running tide left, probably only about 30 minutes, maybe not even, I'll take the opportunity just to go through the rods and reels that we use in a current situation, or in particularly in Westerport where we've got a lot of strong current and a lot of big nasty critters like eagle rays and sharks and brondies and whatnot. And of course our target species, which is snapper. Okay, what we want is a rod that's just a, basically a big, tough, industrial workhorse. And that is what we have here. It's once again it's a thread line outfit. Okay, it's got a very big two-handed foregrip and a very fat butt, butt section and very thick at the base of the rod up to a very fine tip, okay? Fine enough that we can sense uh, most fish bites. You'll even see a whiting on it, believe it or not. Basically a nice whippy tip on it. But basically that rod there is all you need for Western Port. Now it's a bit of an overkill for snapper. I mean that because of the fish out here, even at 10 kilos, you're going to get in on equipment less than this. But the reason we have such massive reels and such big, ugly, tough rods is because of all those nasty critters. What you can't afford to be doing is spending 20 or 30 minutes fighting a stingray, or a shark for that matter, in a hot snapper bite. Because that's baits out of the water and that's time down. Okay? We need to be able to tackle those fish and get them to the boat in a couple of minutes, cut them off and get, get a bait back out of the water. That's the most important reason why we fish heavy out here. It's not a... We're not out here to pose, we're out here to actually get fish in the boat, and this is what we do, we use these, okay? The reel I use, in this case, is a Spheros 14,000. It's got a very smooth waterproof drag, very smooth. And uh, the good thing about this baby, it holds about 400 meters of uh, Shimano X-Age 15 pound, or 15 kilo line, okay? That's a lot for a thread line. I'd never use that on a big fish. 
on a, on a, on a uh, big snapper anyway. But like I said, the first run of a big eagle run might take 150, even 200 metres. And once I lock, crank that drag up and put the acid on him, I can crank him back pretty quick, get him up the side of the boat and nip him off. Right, so that's the, basically the outfit we use out here. You'll see it through the rest of the DVD and you'll see how smooth the drag is and how well it copes with both Eagle Rays and Big Snapper. But that's our choice in reels. Pretty damn simple. And of course on the end of that we just run the traditional Western Bull Snapper rig. Now I've noticed that Peter's brought along his own little outfits here. Look, they are absolutely ideal snapper outfits. They're basically the same thing that I'm using but just a a scale down, 7 kilo outfits, okay? Lighter rod, still got a fine tip, your traditional Port Phillip snapper rods basically. They will catch just about any snapper out here, and hopefully we can do that today. But where Pete's going to come undone, I can see it right now, is that the first big eagle ray that comes along, mate, it's going to absolutely decimate that line almost to the hub. So uh, let's just pray that you don't get onto one on one of these reels, mate. But that's out in Western Port. That would almost be a whiting outfit. Now that's probably a big, big call. But seriously, that is your ideal Port Phillip Bay. Um, snapper outfit. It's all quality still. It's still a you know, stratic reel that holds a few hundred metres of 15 pound line. But I don't like your chances with these big rays, baby. I don't like your chances. We'll, there see, we'll we go. see how we go. Too small, you reckon? You keep saying the other big man, but I think this one's going to get the big fish by the end of the day. <laughs> well, I hope he does. I just hope it's not one of these ones because he'll have no <laughs> line left on it by the end of the day. Is that an aggressive edge, Yeah. I think. <laughs> the difference is that Brendan likes to think of it as a stingray. Maybe even a banjo shark, it's not doing much. And as you can see, I tend to disagree with him. Well, I'm not holding the rod either. No. I don't know what's going on there, I can't. That's got some good head kicking. It has. It just. Oh, like a gummy almost. Could be a gummy. Oh, it's just slow down a bit. There it is. Big red. Red. Big red. Watch out, mate. You're standing on the net. Kilos, I think. Well, it's always a good sign when you're fishing, when the pickers stop and you think nothing's going on. And that watch, that's what your reward can be. Well, there you go, mate. Nice first season, Red. Oh, Pete, nice fish. That is a nice fish, isn't it? He'd be, he'd be probably five kilos, I'd say. We'll put him on the, we'll put him on the Shimano spring scales and take another look. Yep. But I reckon he'd be he'd be only about five, four point nine, yep. five kilos. Yeah, I reckon just done just ten around ten pound. Didn't give you a lot of stick, did he? Well he didn't at the start, but uh, he gave those classic nods that yeah, uh, big nods. Brendan said there's a bit of heavy weight there and uh, he just gave those nods and those little short sharp runs. He didn't take a big long run or anything. Mm -hmm. But he gave some nice runs and uh, Early season still, I think, you know, late October, but uh, it's a fantastic fish just before the new moon and it's a great way to start uh, start the season off. And one of the best things about this fish for us, or well, for me anyway, is we've come out, we know there's reports of fish up north, there's fish down south, no one's talking about the fish here off Woolies, Woolies Point or Woolies Jetty. We've come along a 12 metre line that we think the fish run along, and sure enough, in one small area we've marked up arch, arch, arch on the sander. And we've turned around, come back, anchored up, blind. We've sat here for three hours. Three hours. Kept saying that even though we know this fish here, it's just a matter of time to one of them picks up a bait and off he goes. Because they're only going to feed for short first this early in the season. And sure enough, there you go, mate. And even that fish didn't go off. Just, no. just picked up the rod and... Over it went. Didn't take a long run no. or anything. But uh, well worth the reward and the effort, mate. Yep, not Thank a bad fish. Thanks for getting those squid this morning, mate. No worries, mate. Someone had to get out of bed at sunrise. He did. <laughs> I just had a nice sleep in. Yeah. Thanks, mate. No worries. So do you like the spot? Love it. <laughs> well done, mate. Put him on the scales. I'll just get the scales out. Oh, winger. Winger, you're on. That left one. Yep. And guess what it is, guys? Red? Yep. I see red, I see red, I see red. Snapper. You might want to... Absolutely, mate. 
Excuse, we marked up arches. Here we go. We marked up arches. Don't ever think you can't mark up fish in Western Port Bay. It's just not true. We're only in 12, 12 metres of water. And this trip started for me at 4 a.m. this morning. I got out on my own and I caught four squid at Stony Point. Then without a snapper rod in the boat, I spent an hour and a half sounding from Stony Point all the way to Lysarts on the channel edge. I marked up fish. I rang Pete and said, mate, get down here. I think there's fish in my favourite area. Pete's uh, obliged. He was here within, what, two hours or something, mate? Two hours. We come down at lunchtime. Yeah, it's definitely a snapper, mate. I think it's got some lines, so... You need assistance? And all of a sudden we've got a double hook up now. We've just got to get this fish in the boat. Just, just light, just finger weight. What's the hurry? If I've only got a hook just inside the bottom drawer in the top lip, I put too much load in this fish, hook's gone. Warren, where are you, mate? Out on charter on Port Phillip, no doubt. Yeah, I've collected some lines here, Pete. You've got to love the sound. This, these X135 Lawrence's look, just make it clear, I'm not sponsored by Lawrence, but I think they're just wonderful things. And I, I've been sanding this area for the last four weeks. Haven't seen so much as an arch. So it meant something today when I saw an arch. Something had changed. Fish had turned up and bang, we're on them, mate. It's a good feeling knowing that there's 300 boats up the north there all catching pinkies. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice way to start the season, mate. You're right. Another good fish too. Yeah, it's a good fish. Your rod's a lot heavier than mine. Yes, it is. It's taking big... you a fair while to get this fish in. I'd say it's better than five. Better than mine? Uh, in that range, but just a little bit better. <laughs> it just has to be, doesn't it? Just 100 grams, maybe. <laughs> and if it's not, you'll put a singer in its mouth. Now, it's a good fish. Have a look at him, mate. Yep. He's nice, mate. I'll get the net. Get this all going. Good fish, isn't he? Oh, he's nice, mate. He's bigger than mine. This one could be going back in, I think, if we can get the hook out of her. There you go. I don't think it is, it's just got tangles. It's not that much bigger. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you notice how they swam that into the net? Just Pete, makes it nice and easy. We practiced on the mulloway, remember? That's right. And I got my squid jig back too. Nice. Well done, mate. Congratulations, mate. Fantastic. Nice way to start the season. And we've still got half an hour tied to go, so oh, you nice. never know. Could be some more of these. He's a little bit bigger, isn't he? Just a bit? No, I think he's a bit smaller, mate. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to break that to you, but... Uh... About, about 50 grams heavier, is it? Could be. It's a, Whoa. It's a bit of a head on him, this one, isn't he? Yeah. I think he's a bit smaller. A... Hook's out again. Oh, yeah. Hook's are right down this time. He wasn't going anywhere, was he? No, not in a hurry. Now, whether it's big or not, I don't know. But it's 100 grams bigger, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Let me just dress this fish up for you a bit, mate. He's looking a bit ugly, mate. See, so mine was a handsome fish, yours. Just a little bit butt ugly, mate. Well, he's not he's... going back, is he? Have a, look at, have a look at that down the mouth, though. Yeah. New early season fish, that means a lot of competition there. He's a lot of competition for food. That's why he's hit it, and he's just kept on going with it. He's put it right down his mouth there. You can see those hooks down there. Inhaled Let, it. But let's get him back in, mate. I don't know. I don't know if we're putting him back with those hooks in there. Okay. The next one can go back. But he is smaller than mine. <laughs> yeah. You're a funny man. Just look at him. Look at the beautiful colours Look at the colours in, on the sun, in the sun. They're not going that hard, are they? No, no. no. But still, putting up a decent fight. Yep. Still very honest fish. Yep. Look at that beautiful sun coming off him. You know, it's just, late just, evening. Just give this, give the clip at the mouth there, mate. Put some knife there. Okay. I'll just get a good knife, mate. Actually, I reckon he's about 10 grams heavier. <laughs> mate. <laughs> we'll get him on the lie detector later. We'll get it on film so everybody can see. No, I, can, I admit he's not as big. He's only about four and a half. Let's get some baits out there, mate.
Raymond. Eagle Ray. They're quite amazing, aren't they? Oh, yeah. And people laugh when you say they're the best fighting fish in Western Port. They have my country more. <laughs> There's nothing else to do, do you like one of these will do you. Someone told me they're a registered game fish. They are? They are? They've actually got IGA fake records, I think. Really? Well, I've got a solution normally for these. Hey, let him sort himself out. So Winger can keep tying his rigs here. I might just crank the drag up. Tie him out a bit. Let him burn some energy while uh, I get ready for my next bait. <laughs> Might have, uh, Might have relieved himself, you reckon? Only if you are lucky. Very lucky. A couple of nice reds and we just... We've had to put up with a fair share of rubbish, haven't we? Just quietly. Is that, uh, is that Eagle Ray number 362 or 363 for the afternoon? Something like that. Oh, isn't it? something on the other one. Is that the uh, same fish? No. Okay. <laughs> Which one would you like me to get, mate? You can grab either one you want. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Seriously, never seen so many eagle rays. You know what? We haven't had eagle rays here for weeks. It's just coming into late October. Tea tree is two weeks out, and all of a sudden the eagle rays have turned up as they do every year. In force. With the snapper. Like a hand in hand. They're easier to handle on this 30 pound here than the lot we use it. Yeah. This is why I fish so such heavy strong equipment. These powerful T curves and these big spirit reels enable me to deal with these stingrays. I'm not saying I don't get done, but not often. I often get them up. Cut them off right at the mouth. Rather than spend 20 minutes on the light tackle trying to deal with them, lose a lot of line, be real. Up he goes. Oh, geez, we've been dealt some rubbish today. enough running that tide to get excited. I'm going to have a ray rest for half an hour. A ray rest? A ray rest. Bugger this. i tell you what. I still got a good feeling. First out of the run in, it's going to be right on sunset. But we can still get a big red the one we really want, mate. That's exactly what we're after, mate. And there's no better, place, no better place to do it than here. I know. Today? I reckon you're right. But I, I reckon this is the... This area of water between Hastings and Stony Point is big red country and always has been. Um, mate, by the way, I've been doing your job for you for the last five minutes while you're battling the other one. Do you, want to, do you want to take over? I've got a crook shoulder, mate. You don't need to be doing me a favour. <laughs> you should have that. That's all, folks. Yeah, that's all, folks. One of my favourite things to do when chasing big red in Western Port or Port Phillip is to get a small cube trail going. And when I say small cube, I mean cutting up a, a burly trail of very small pieces of pilchard, cooter, salmon, whiting, gar, whatever you got, even squid. Now these are squid flaps I'm cutting up. Tiny little pieces. Now that's not enough to really give a snapper a substantial feed. But you feed it down in a burly trail, in the current, and it wafts back hundreds and hundreds of metres, any snapper in that line will pick up on these little pieces go, wow, I want to find where that's coming from. And they come up the trail and they smash it. So I'm going to spend the next four or five hours cutting up a giant big pile of everything I've got in the boat that's just scrappy, like squid bits and pieces, pilchards, gars, and about 30 minutes out from the tide change, I'm going to start a trail. 
I've worked out that it'll go back about a K. And I tell you what, every time I've done it, without, almost without fail, in the last couple of seasons, I brought Big Red to the back of the boat and had Rod scream off. And I'm talking quality fish, not just little fish. Big Red. I tell you what, that's what I call hard work. Cutting up pilchards and squid for four hours. Hopefully it's worth it though. We've got half an hour running out of time to go. Now it's not just a matter of making a big pile here and a big pile in my bucket. It's basically got to be used correctly. You don't just dump it in, because if you do that, the current's going to take it all away and the fish with it. We've actually got to feed it out in very small volumes. The saying is, a little often, or a little bit often. So that's what we're going to do. Basically, to start the Burley Trail, I'll just throw out a big handful like that. And that's it. And then from that moment on, just little tiny pieces like that. Count to 10 seconds roughly, 7 seconds, whatever. And then another one. And the current basically makes a line of scent downstream. Any fish crossing that path will go, geez, I like the smell of that. The idea is they come up, they find the baits at the other end. And that's, that's simple as that. Hopefully in the next half an hour we'll see one, of, one or two or three or four of these rods just buckle over under the weight of a big fish. And if that happens, don't stop the cube trail. Very important to keep it going. If you're on a fish and you don't really want to get your hands in and do it, basically what you do is you grab a big handful like that. And in this case, I just drop it straight in the burly pot like that. And the burly pot will do the, the dispensing for me very slowly. Just keep it going. This is one of the best techniques for pulling a bigger fish at the end of a tide. Patience is a virtue. Never have there been truer words than these when it comes to hunting big snapper. Sometimes it pays to sit and wait it out. And as you'll soon see, patience is also a beautiful thing. Well, it's been a long day. I got up about four this morning. I've been sitting here for five hours and haven't had so much as a touch, except maybe for that eagle ray earlier. My mate Matty Smith married me last night and goes, Winger, I wanna, I wanna have a go at some snapper. Now Matty's a snapper virgin, really. He said, do you mind if I follow you up off Stony? I said, not a problem, mate. He's dropped back about 400 metres. Got a phone call as soon as I got here this morning. Well, as soon as I got my first rod in the water, he goes, oh, I've got a big snapper on board. I said, that'd be right. Good on you, mate. So, good on him. Look, I'm gonna make a bit of a, bit of a change because he actually got that fish on a, on a souri. And I've got all this fresh squid out and it's not seem to be enticing a hit. I do have some gar on board, so what I've done is I've just cut, it's a big gar, so I've cut it in half and I've sort of butterflied the bottom half of the gar and I've got a 4-0 and a 4-0 coming out the nose and at midway. Hopefully that can make a difference. If they're going on fish, that should get smashed. I've ever worked for a snapper in my life. Hooked in the side. I've never worked so hard to get a snapper up. That's hard as hard on an eagle ray pulling that thing sideways in the current. It's good fish too. He's about five and a half kilos that fish. How about that? Took a gar fish. Just goes to show you how important it is to fishing gear. The amount of mulloway I catch this way too, in the hook with a hook in the jaw or outside the face here on the gill plate, because I hit that hook, I hit the bait, 
they, they can spit the bait, but the hook will grab somewhere as it's on, the, on its way out. Hits gear pressure. Bob's your uncle. That fish is exhausted. It's literally exhausted. It's a good size to eat. If I hooked it in the jaw properly, I probably would let it go. But that's a magnificent fish, don't you think? Wow, look at the colours in it. I'd say it's a big, beautiful boy, big male. I'll give it one crack at getting, it, getting him to swim. If he swims, good luck to him. If he doesn't swim, I'll take him home for free. Come on, mate. That's it, fins are up. When the fins are up, that's a good sign. See the fins are right up there. Yes! Woohoo! Shot off like a missile. Oh. Tell you what, it's a magnificent day. I set six hours for that fish, finally got the run. It looked like a snapper run. Bang, bang, bang as it ran. Short zips. But all of a sudden, something was wrong. I thought the sinker was snagged, or maybe it was a ray, but every now and then, bang, 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 like a snapper. And I've never worked so hard in the last month to get a fish up as that snapper because he was in the side. Of. Eagle rays aren't even that hard. Wow. I wasn't sure that he'd go. But geez, he went all right, didn't he? He took off like a bullet to the bottom. I suppose when you bring them up slow like that, their swim bladder slowly deflates and it's not an issue for them. Oh well, it's still got an hour run in the tide. Hopefully we can get a bigger one, you know, the big, big one we're after. Woo! Tide change, started the burly. After I've just put that other fish back, I was worried I wasn't going to get any more. This rod's just howled off. Oh, and it's a snapper. It's another red. Jeez, not normally a big fan of tie changes. But if you burly up like I've just done then, any fish behind you'll sense it. I saw the rod go bang. I picked up the rod. As he went again, I let him go and then struck and he took off. I come around to grab the camera, turn the camera on and she's still hooked up. I don't know if it's a big fish. I seem to be getting a lot around that five, five and a half kilos. Nothing to complain about though, they're great fish. The way I see it is though, I've obviously picked the right highway that the big fish are, or the good fish are travelling on. It's just a matter of time till a big fish comes along. You know? You never know. This actually could turn out to be a big fish, but at the moment, it's pretty weighty. I will say, and it's not giving me a lot of stick like a pinky. Drag off just enough. I've got him right at the side of the boat here. So when I get him up, I'll put him in the rod hole and go grab the net. Because the net's on the floor under everything. Oh, it's a snapper for sure. Bang, bang. Actually, could be a good red. He just made mincemeat of my drag then. Still not that loose. Still put some serious weight on him without the drag given. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting for this for a good week or two now. Putting in the hard yards. Please don't let those hooks pull. This is very, very light pressure. When he wants to go, right there, I let him go. If I don't resist him pulling back down. Back to drag off his gun again. And then as soon as I can get some line back, I just take it. He's still deep. Take the drag off and let him go. Get that it ready. Now I'm ready to go. If I put him up on the surface and try to grab the net, no given the line, hooks might pull. 
tell you what, it's a very good snapper. It's at least five kilos, put that way. You can never tell if it's going to be a really big snapper until you get them up. Every time we get him up, he goes straight back down. <coughs> and if he's a jaw hooked fish, I can get him swimming again. If he's a gut hooked fish, I'll get him in the boat. I'll tell you what, it's a good red. problem getting these right in the water. I just don't overexert. You just never know how well you've hooked them. You know if you've got weaknesses in your line. Um, definitely a good fish. <laughs> come on mate, up you come. Every time he does that he gets a bit more tired. And I can get him up a little bit, a little bit easier, in theory. And the best thing is, I've watched the better part of 40 odd boats, 400 metres away here, catching hundreds of pinkies. And I've just sat here on my own since 5 o'clock this morning. I've had boats come up, pull up next to me, sit there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. No fish here, and off they go. Oh, what a magnificent specimen. That's a snapper. That's a six kilo plus fish. Have a look at this. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's a big red. That's mid sixes to seven kilos. Wow. Unfortunately, no. Hooks in the top. Now let's put him down for a second. Tell you what, very lucky to get him. Bottom hook gone. Wow. Bottom hook snapped clean. That top hook was hard in the jaw. I'm going to get this fish going. He's a seven kilo fish. What a big fish. Have a look at this. This beast. The beast of a snapper. That's what we live for. Have a look at him. Oh yeah. He's about 6.7, 6.8 kilos. Genuine bona fide. Alright, I'm not going to put him on the scales. I'm not going to put him through that stress. But seriously. That's a big red. It's a couple of kilos off what we're really after. This one's for you, was it? Let's put him back. Oh. There we go, there's another snapper on. I better go grab that rod. Certainly is, I've got to get this fish going. Most important to get this fish going. Come on, big daddy. Come on. Feeling efficient when that big red swims away, and guess what I got here? Another one. Hoo -hoo -hoo! Another good fish. He's very close to the anchor rope, though. That's a problem. You might see some stunt work here. Not in the same league as the last one, I don't think. Oh, bang bang, it's definitely a red. So 
mean, what my missus wanted me to pull the pin 10 minutes ago. She goes, you got one? I said, darling, there's still 10 minutes of run. I'll tell you what, if I got that burly going, I could probably get quite a few more. <laughs> he's better than five kilos again. I don't know if he's bigger than the last one, but I'll tell you what, you never know. You never pick a snapper by his fight. I've learnt that. Some of the big fish don't go that good. Some of the little fish go like little battlers. Here, are, fishing with Winger, Solo on Western Port Bay. There's no place like home. <laughs> Mate, oh, it's a quality fish. Come on, where's that net? Nice and handy. I'd say because I let that last one go, that I probably won't get another hit on the other rods, which I'm happy. I, you can never complain with what I've just, what I'm experiencing here. You know, big fish. Not not as big as that last one, but good fish. Oh yeah, he'd be five kilos. Straight in the net. Oh. No, maybe he's a bit bigger than five. This one's probably a good six and a half again. He's a fat fish. Yes. Another good fish. Look at that. She's about somewhere between five and a half and six kilo range. Big knobby nose. The last one was milting everywhere. Probably a male as well. This is just fantastic. Don't you love it? I'm gonna get this one going too. It just goes to show you. You be patient, don't move, and believe. And what you're doing, using fresh quality baits, fishing in the known hot snapper spots, at the right time of year, on the right tides, with the right rig and tackle, never give up, you can go from a pretty ordinary day to one of your best days ever. And that's what I'm experiencing right about now. Let's just get, if I get this fish going, it will be the best day ever. Fins are up, spines are up. Usually a good sign. Right. They are extremely difficult fish to release, Snapper. So many things have got to go right. Yes! So everything has got to go right. I'll tell you what, it obviously was all right for that fish. Well, that's big red, Melbourne style.